Good afternoon to everyone watching. My name is Suyash. You know what? The last week has seen torrential rainfall here in Goa. And since the last time I was sat here at the Let's Football Live show, we have seen a torrent of goals being scored in the Hero ISL. Listen, it's blink and you miss it stuff right now in the league because in the last week, a record 30 goals were scored since I was last sat here. As I said, well, last time I was here, I had company with me. This time around, it's no different as well. So let me waste no more time in introducing Shaiju Damodran, Polas Dhar, and Kaushik Varun. Guys, just please show yourselves in because we have a lot to get through, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think the number of goals that we've seen, the number of uh, results and, you know, what stands out. And, and we were having a chat about this. We have so many things stand out. But for me, the fact that Odisha... Chennai and Jamshedpur especially have kept going and, you know, are still right, right in the mix and just unbeaten themselves unbeaten is, is for me, I can't choose one highlight. That is the highlight for me that the table is so refreshing and continues to be. What about you, Varun? Well, for me, it's going to be my two teams, you know, conceding so many goals. 30th of November, 1st of December, like so many goals. Uh, I don't know what happened in the defence, but especially, you know, the ATK Mohan Bagan match. I never expected Mumbai City FC will have such an easy win. And, uh, you know, I, like that was a nightmare. I hope both the teams bounce back. Varun, my two teams, like you were almost tongue-tied uh, out of <laughs> sadness while, while recounting those results. Uh, let's go from your team to your team, Shaiju Chittan. How did the week go for you? What was your highlight? Last week, last week, it's just a memorable week for all of us. Of course, we saw a 10 goal match between uh, Odisha and uh, SE East Bengal. Luckily, that record has not been broken. Luckily, in Madagascar <laughs> League in 2002, there is a match which, uh, which, we, which the entire uh, Guinness Book of World Records witnessed 149 goals, which is currently the world Guinness World Record. Ke that match in Madagascar League, 149 goals. Luckily, that record has not broken. Here we, here we witnessed one of the best matches, 10 goals. But, so yes, to be very frank with all of you, my match for the last week, of course, our match, Kerala Blasters, we could have been, we could have been won, that, won that match. We could have been got three points. But if you say in Malayana, so, Maliga Mughalil area Manande Tholil Marapu Ketunadum Bhavan. It is something in English. God is the one who uh, gives us majestic life at the same time, miserable life. That is life. The same side of the two coins. Within the span of two minutes, Albino Gomez put a brilliant save, that close range shot from uh, Clayton Silva. And the very next minute, a Kasansa goal, easy goal he considered from Ashi Kurnian. That is life. That is football. According to me, that was the exact highlight of the week. Beautifully summed up, Shaiju Chittan. That was, wow, that was impressive stuff. I am, you know, one of the best things about this show is that every every time we go live, Shaiju Chittan always has some snippet up his sleeve and he'll just come and whip something out in Malayalam and explain I'm, it to the rest of us. I'm no. just hoping, I'm just hoping he wasn't watching a cricket game when he spoke about that Madagascar game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can, I can confirm to everyone that I was not standing in goal for that match. I was wondering in, in case... Shaiju Chattu was there in the goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I, I, I'll just let that one slide. I'll just let it slide. But since we were speaking about goals, guys, uh, as we usually do, Let's go through our goals of the week. Like I said, 30 goals were scored in the last week. Take a look at all of them.
you know, in a normal week, we'd be lucky if we had one or two games to discuss as talking points. But in the table in front of me right now, I can see at least four results that stood out. That Derby win for ATK Mohan Bagan. We had Mumbai City FC winning 5-1 against ATK Mohan Bagan. That 10-goal thriller, which involved Odisha FC and SC East Bengal. And of course, we have the table, which looks a bit like this owing to those results, Pulas. Of course, um, the very refreshing, as I said earlier, but here's, here's a little uh, snippet. If ATK Mohan Bagan are not going to be top of the table at December, then Paul Maysfield has promised to go blonde. And I've just confirmed with him before the show that that <laughs> will happen. We will make it happen. <laughs> What's with the TV crew and the bet that everyone I have no idea. Away? See, I've, I've stayed away from, I've stayed away from those, you know, uh, it seems like the younger ones are the smarter ones. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Put your put your put your money where your mouth is, Pulas. You know, we just we. I'm gonna bring a. I'm gonna bring one of these out from you very very soon. Let me tell you that. But guys, uh, just looking at that table, you know, one team kind of stood out for me. Even though they've slightly gone under the radar, some would even some would even say that they've uh, been dark horses so far. I'm talking about Jamshedpur FC, who sit in fifth position. Um, still one of the only unbeaten teams in the league. Uh, and we're here to kind of shine the spotlight on Jamshedpur FC as well, in particular on one player, on one player. Greg Stewart scored his goal, his opening goal of the Hero ISL, and it's his first goal in the league. It's his first goal in the league. And just on that, the way he kind of danced through the entire sort of sequence of events, the Hyderabad FC defenders left for dead, curling it into the top corner, we kind of did some digging we actually got Greg Stewart, who is about to join us very, very soon on this live. Uh, but before that, pull us. how about that goal by Greg Stewart right before he joins? Could you just kind of let us know what you were doing when that goal was scored? Well, I was, I was obviously watching the game. Uh, we were with everybody. And the, the, I think the first one was the one where I really thought that he would score. But the second one, uh, when it went in off the right foot and we all went like, wow, that's his weaker foot. And that, 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 that weaker foot is the complete antithesis. It was complete antithesis of right now, Greg Stewart is muted. But on that <laughs> night, he was completely unmuted right. and absolutely exuberant in, in, the, in the way he celebrated and scored that goal. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. You know what? Uh, not a muted celebration by Greg Stewart by any way shape or form you know that that the kind of snake celebration which he brought out as a homage almost to his teammate uh, Jordan Murray we actually have Greg Stewart waiting in the wings for us so Greg why don't you come right in and tell us first of all uh, I know we mentioned that your celebration was unmuted so first of all why don't you just unmute yourself as well so that you can join this conversation and be a part of this panel how's your day going so far Greg hi guys how y'all doing yeah yeah good Good, thanks. So, Greg, uh, just on that goal, you know, our panelists have a lot of questions about that goal. First of all, Varun actually wanted to ask you about bubble life. Varun, why don't you take over? Yeah, like, how has it been, like, in the dressing room, like, who's the naughty person and how has it been, like, staying with your, you know, like, family? It's like a newfound family right now. It's been, like, your bubble. So, how is it? Like, who are your best friends? Any Hindi words you have learned in the bio bubble? Yes, yeah, it's, it's been, um, it's been certainly a bit different. Um... But as you say, you, you become you become a bit of a family um, because you see one everyone twenty four seven. So yeah, it's been a we've got a great group, a group of lads here um, and the coaching staff and the people behind the scenes. They can't do enough for you to help um, the people in the hotel as well. So it's it's been as you say, it's it's like a family. It's become. Yeah, you know, Pulas, I actually have a bone to pick with Greg. Greg, you don't know this, but before the season started, when we were doing the Let's Football Live Twitter space, uh, we had Peter Hartley join that Twitter space, and you had actually commented saying it's a good way to, for people to go to sleep, if you remember that. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that or not, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have you know yeah. that that Twitter space went quite well, and we love having your company, don't we, Pulas? Absolutely. Yeah, he, he, big, right. Peter, big Peter has not changed. If you still chat with him, you still <laughs> to be asleep. Right. So, so Greg, I just, I just kind of briefly wanted to bring up the goal that you scored against Hyderabad FC. Now, uh, you know, you had a chance before that as well, but how important was this goal in the scheme of things for your team to, of course, take the lead? It went a long way in uh, 
in Jamshedpur FC maintaining their unbeaten record, didn't it? Yeah, um, it was obviously, I was disappointed with the, the shot just before. Um, but with this one, um, I don't score many goals with my right foot, so it was nice to see it go in the back of the net. Um, it ju- the ball just came to me from the throwing, and I didn't really know where to pass. There was no one really on for an easy pass, so yeah. I just had to to try and dribble dribble past three or four players. And luckily enough, I've managed to find space to get to get my shot away. And as I say, it's it's always nice when it finds a corner. Right, Greg, are you left footed or right footed? Because we certainly can't tell the way you played during that game. I'm 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 all left foot to be honest. Ah, so I mean that makes sense because you had a run before that. Uh, before I talk about that run, what about that celebration though? Why has everyone in the Jamshedpur FC squad just sworn to do the make celebration each time someone scores? Mm, I, I don't know, but it was just a bit a bit of banter with with um, Jordan Murray. Um, Jordan's Jordan's been out injured. Uh, he missed the last game for the injury. So I knew I knew he was in the stand, and we and we just said before if I, if I score I'll, I'll come and celebrate with you. Um, so it was just it was just a bit of a bit of banter between me and Jordan. Yeah, nice to see the camaraderie in the whole squad as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, guys, Shaiju Chetan, uh, Varun, and Reg, to just talk us through the process behind that goal. We'll just slow down the goal for you, Greg, and we want you to take over. Tell us what was going through your mind when the goal was being scored, and uh, like you mentioned. How about that right foot of yours? Yeah, as I say, when the ball just came came into my feet, I was looking for someone maybe to run across me, but but no one no one was really there. So I just thought I just have to try and go on a solo run. Yeah, uh, like enough, you are right now, like you are right now going on a solo run yeah. from the right flank. What about this? Do you wish you'd scored this goal though? I know it for a fact. Yeah, I I, I was probably away celebrating to be honest. <laughs> Um, for it to hit the post and, and go where it went, you don't you don't really see that a lot. So yeah, I was obviously afterwards. I couldn't I couldn't believe it didn't go in. Yeah, uh, Shaiju Chetan, do you think, in your opinion, which would have been a better goal for Greg to score? Do you think this goal would have been a better one or the one that he actually scored? Uh, the first one which hits the pole uh, yeah. would have been the best one. But I have a question for you, Greg. Now I have a question for you. Uh, the yeah, goal uh, reminds that dribble reminds me uh, uh, some dancing steps, nice dancing steps inside the box that reminds us. So here in India, we love dancing very much. We have some well famous uh, traditional dance forms like the Bharat Natyam, the Kathak, the Kuchipudi. Uh, my question to you have two parts. Uh, would you uh, you like dancing really? Would you like dancing? And question number two. If you want to learn the Indian classical dance, please, we will, the Let's Football Live can arrange a serious training sessions on Indian <laughs> classical dance. Please, Greg. I, I would, I absolutely love dancing, but I would, I would be lying if I told you I was good at it. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit stiff, unfortunately. Um, but I do love a dance now and again, but um, yeah, as I say, I'm, I'm not very good at it. You know, Greg, we keep hearing Pulas say that through the week, you know, I'm just feeling a little stiff, guys. You know, it's my hamstrings a little stiff, you know, so you're not, you're not the only one in that, uh, in that boat. Pulas, is, isn't that true? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, Greg, uh, before, uh, when you were left out of that first starting 11, and I, I think I met uh, Owen Coyle for an interview, and I told him, how could you not have played uh, Greg Stewart in the first game? And, and Coyle was like, um, oh, you know, it's very easy to sit there and not uh, and pick the team. And then when I saw you in the in the next game, I was like, yes, now, now he's going to, now I'm going to just, next time I meet Owen, I'm going to be like, see, I told you, just tell the gaffer and really going to get under his skin. Not a good idea. But, you know, Greg, I have, a, I have a story, of course, a lot of questions about India, but slightly different going back to your time in Scotland and one of the, one of the most uh, revered players in India is obviously Steven Gerrard. Do you have any Gerrard anecdotes, any stories from your time under him? That, that you like to tell people? The Woody score screamers in training? How was it? Um yeah, I've I can I can remember I can remember one story. It, it was about I had we um I had just signed and after two weeks pre-season we, we went to Portugal on a training camp. Um and, and we played at the end of training we play a, a round robin. So that's four teams and then you just play each other to see who see who wins, who has the most points and 
I remember one of the players got injured and he and he went on one of the other teams. And I can always remember when the ball just came just came to him and it sat up on the bounce and he just half half volleyed this this ball right into the top corner. Wow. And it was just unbelievable. They all, they, they always say you lose your legs, but you never lose your lose your touch. And and that was just a touch of quality. I actually wow. thought he could he could probably still play for us now. <laughs> think. Is 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 Owen Coyle doing stuff like that in training as well? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, uh, the gaff the gaffer here he, he likes to get involved with the with the shooting and and uh, little rondos. He likes to get involved. To be fair, which is which is good. It's great for the morale for for everyone. That's fantastic. Yeah. Talk, talk your morale in the camp, Varun. We were a little curious to know about what kind of characters there are in the Jamshedpur FC camp, weren't we? Exactly, exactly right. I really love the celebration. First of all, like everyone jumped on you. Yes, it was a special goal for you. But uh, yes, again, like a uh, question like who's the naughtiest and who's like the one who's always focused before a game, like when Jamshedpur FC starts? You looked at someone <laughs> over there, Greg. You looked at someone <laughs> over there. I think he's because, the naughtiest only. Because Jao's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, Greg, would say, I would say there's there's a couple of boys that like to to have a carry on. There's there's not much to do, so you have to keep yourself busy. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so when it does. when it becomes dark at night, um, there's some mischievous boys that kick about <laughs> and go up to a couple. Of you know, I mean. We, we 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 need names over here, Greg. That's how we all we, we need <laughs> names. Putting but... you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stitch anyone up, so you know. All right, all right. It, I need to keep it like this for now. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll keep it we'll keep it sanitized, like you said. We'll keep it sanitized. Uh, but yeah, Shaiju Chetan, you had you had another question for Greg. Why this number twenty four? Are you planning to score twenty four goals in the first season itself? Well. It's not my target. I've got a little bit less than that, but if you want to give me 24, I would, I would, I would take that just now, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But look, it's, it's, um, it's, all about, it's all about just trying to win as many games as possible and we're, we're still undefeated so far. And look, we just need to try and keep that momentum going. Uh, we've got a, a really tough week, week or two coming up, so we know we need to keep... Um, recover well and, and go again because the games come thick and fast. And Greg, do you think that your experience of winning the league with uh, Rangers back home in Scotland will serve you well with Jamshedpur FC? Because you had a fantastic time with them. So talk us through uh, that a bit and how your experience would help Jamshedpur FC in the future. Yeah, uh, uh, you learn you learn a lot from, ob- obviously, um, Stephen. Stephen Gerrard and, and the coaching staff were there. They were they were at an elite club before they came to Rangers. You know his his career speaks for, for itself. So when you learn when you learn of people like that that have played played at elite level in the game, you learn little little things that you you didn't realise at, at the time. And then you play with top players as well. And then you get that you get that winning mentality where you just. Every week, you just want to go and get three points. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how you get it. You can play bad, but you get three points, and that's all that mattered when you were at Rangers. So, yeah, if, if I can try and help that, help um, get that into some of the boys here, then hopefully we can have a successful season because we have a we have a good team, and it's not just individuals. We we all we all stick together. Yeah, you know, Greg, you can really see that when you when you see Jamshed Puresi playing on the pitch, there's a real sense of camaraderie, like I mentioned before. And long may that continue. So thank you so much for joining us on the Let's Football Live show. We loved having you. And I speak on behalf of everyone, the whole crew, Polast, Varun, and uh, Shaiju Chetan. Chetan, by the way, Chetan, we call him Shaiju Chetan because he's his big brother. So, <laughs> you know, that's that's what we that's what we refer to him as. Uh, but yes, Greg, thank you so much for joining us. All the best for the rest of the season. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Cheers, great. Thanks. Nice man, Greg Stewart. Lovely guy. Yeah, and I think I think he's putting everybody off by by saying that he's right footed. I think there's there's a there's a yeah, he's just yeah, trying to some, confuse there's, people. There's there's some there's something going on there. <laughs> yes, yes, Jatin. Somebody before the show was talking about that uh, he's he's very reluctant to speech. He's an introvert. Who said, man? Land. <laughs> No idea. I don't know someone. 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 Yeah, I don't know. Someone. Someone <laughs> spreading rumors. I'm not sure who is. <laughs> you know, going from rumors to facts. Okay, let's. This is a show where we stick to the facts. And fact is, 
that going back to the games that were played last week, the Kolkata derby, I want to highlight that, was, I mean, it's a fact that it was a one-sided game. ATK Mohan Bagan completely dominating SC's Bengal in that game. So, Varun, I just want you to run me through that game. What went wrong for SC's Bengal on that day? Uh, I think, uh, you know, both the sides have a very poor defence, it seems like, in this season. But that day, I think SC's Bengal's defence, you know, got uh, like out in the open. And uh, the Marinas really dominated with their attack mode. And especially if you have a uh, look at the first goal, Roy Krishna was unmarked. Second goal, Manveer, rocket shot. And third goal, obviously, an error. So, I think both the teams are struggling with the defence. But that day, you know what, like, ATK Mohan had an amazing offence. So, I think that's the reason they won in the first 23 minutes itself. And the ATK Mohan Bagan fans wanted more goals. It didn't happen. But I think it was a good uh, point for SC's Bengal also. They fi- found out like Shubham Sen is also great, you know, under the post. And uh, also Adil Khan, I think, deserves a more playing time. He was also very impressive in that game, the derby. Yeah, he, he made a crucial last-ditch uh, interception of, of that Roy Krishna run on the right flank. I remember that. Mm. Uh, and good for SC East Bengal to get their first clean sheet of the season as well. Of course, last night uh, against Chennai NFC, although some would say that it was a miracle that Chennai NFC didn't score last night. But hey, thank God for small mercies for SC East Bengal. Another game that we must speak about early in the week, which came, was Hyderabad FC's win over Mumbai City FC. Now, I was there at that game, Shaju Chitran. And the intensity with, with which Hyderabad FC played during that game was, was really unparalleled. However... They've gone on to do not so well in their other games. So, do you feel that Hyderabad tend to perform better against sides that play like them, open up and play like them? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the vital point when we discuss about the Hyderabad's games. So, like Mumbai, we know they are an attacking side. They will play attacking football. So, obviously, the opposite side, the opposite half will be open up. So, Hyderabad is a kind of a team, if they get open spaces in the final third, they can score goals. See, remember their first game against Chennai and FC, which they lost. Why? Because Chennai, we know, it's a congested side. In the defensive side, they're pretty hard to break. They're a very hard nut to crack, Chennai and FC, to be very frank. So, like you said, against teams which can which, 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 which can play open game, Hyderabad is dangerous. See, remember, three different scorers, Jao Victor, Ogbeche and Rohit Danu. They, they, see, this is something like, we, we call it as... Uh, uh, pistol offense. Hyderabad, we can call it as a pistol offense. This is something like shoot and run. Well, run, run and shoot. See, if, 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 if you understand your opponent team is, is having clear edge over you uh, in a game, so what you do, never allow your opponent to settle down because they are the champions. So never allowed Hyderabad, never allowed Mumbai to settle down in that match and the eventual result 3-1 in favor of Hyderabad FC. So, that was a pistol offense. Yeah, might be something for Manolo Marquez to figure out because there will be a lot of teams that will sit back against Hyderabad FC and tend to catch them on the break. So, uh, things to be figured out over there for Hyderabad FC. Although, yes, uh, style of play, very attractive, like we've said on various occasions on this show before. Another game that we must speak about, since you mentioned Chajudet and Chennai and FC before this, Chennai and FC's win over Northeast United FC, that 2-1 game. And my man, Anirudh Thapa, coming to the fore again. I do have a soft spot for him. I'll admit it. Pull us. Talk us through that game, especially that goal. That is just the first touch. is just incredible. The way he's yeah. taken it in his stride, you can see that there's a lot of freedom with which he can express himself, the pace to outrun the man. And I think he mentioned after the game as well that I saw the goalkeeper leaving a gap and he usually goes for the roof of the net. He usually goes high, uh, Anirudh Thapa. And he's just, that is, and you know, John Helm said on commentary, that is a glorious goal and it is glorious. And, and, and we like seeing that kind of, you know, that kind of a moment from the captain of the team. It just reinforces his, uh, the confidence the, that he has in himself. Yeah, balletic almost in his in the in the in the stance that he takes while while yeah. taking that shot, and then the yeah. way his his follow through almost comes out very beautiful to watch. Uh, Pulas, you in fact met Bozidar Bandovich as well, right? If I'm yeah. not mistaken, how did that yeah. conversation go? Oh, it was lovely. Um, I've, I've interviewed a lot of uh, head coaches, uh, luckily uh, because of my job, but. Uh, he gave me a footballing lesson here. Uh, I told him after the interview that I go back uh, to the hotel enlightened about how he wants to play the sport because, you know, there are head coaches who like to keep it, who don't want to talk a lot about what they expect from their teams. But with Bandovich, the way he spoke, uh, I can imagine 
that he has a complete grip on the dressing room. I can imagine uh, the likes of Chante, Narayan Das, and I mentioned some Indian names, uh, Thapa as well, who will listen to him. And there is, there is this misconception that even I had that maybe he wants to play a tight and compact game. It is not true. Uh, for me, what stood out in that interview is him saying, my players can do whatever they want uh, in terms of expressing themselves in attack as long as they give maximum effort. The result is on my head. When you say that to young players, especially Chantes and Thapas who want to go out and show what they can do, I think you, you're seeing the results on the pitch. It's, it's kind of shocking they did not get three points uh, last night. But you could see the number of attempts and the, shot, and the shots on a, another night that could have been 8-0, 9-0 uh, if, if those yeah. went in. All credit, of course, for he's been going to you know, getting men behind. But uh, uh, I, think, I think speaking with Bandovic was, now we know what to expect from Chennai in, and I think uh, they might go a long way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's fascinating insight. Actually, you know what, Chaju Chetan and Varun, hmm. Pulast has been actually jetting across, zipping across Goa, uh, you know, has no time at lunch, has no time at dinner, is just going from <laughs> one training ground to the other, meeting different head coaches. In fact, he met uh, Ivan Bukomanovic and Juan Ferrando as well. So how did, how did those conversations go, Pulast? Uh, Juan Ferrando was... Uh... Obviously not in the greatest moods because uh, he's focusing on the next, next game. Vukomanovic, uh, this is the third time I've met him. He was telling me stories about, uh, you know, his time in Yugoslavia and how he, you know, uh, you know how they're built differently in terms of the discipline. And, and he was talking about bubble life, especially, and how even if it wasn't a bubble, he mentioned that teams would have to be on the plane, go back to the hotel, play the next game, leave from there, be on a plane. So this togetherness obviously is not very... It's not just limited to the bubble. He said that during his time, he was always with the teams. Of course, uh, there was a mention. Juan Ferrando said, uh, it might not be fun for a lot of players to look at the coach every day at the hotel, which is kind of yeah. probably true. You, you might not want to. It's, it's like your school teachers. You might not want to look at them every day. But um, I think Juan Ferrando was also very clear about um, he doesn't want to change the system too much. He's focusing yeah. right now on the mentality part of, of the game. And that for me... For him, I think what is important is to unlock the happiness, the mental freedom right now in his team, which has kind of gone down because of the first two results. But one good result and things might change entirely. So there is positivity with Vukomanovic. For the first time, he said, he didn't mention the word attacking football. For the first time, he told me that we might have to look at organization. So oh. it's about how coaches are also evolving given the results that the teams are seeing. It's fascinating. Fascinating insight. Chetan, your reaction on hearing that Kerala Blasters and attacking football not being spoken about in the same breath by the head coach himself? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's reality. See, we have to, we have to uh, reciprocate according to the uh, results which we have already seen. Yes. Last, yeah, last two matches, uh, that could have been easily uh, gettable six points, I, I would say. Six points uh, against Northeast United and uh, and last match uh, Kerala Blasters played against Bengaluru. So so th that comment uh, according to the result only. So that's quite uh, that, that's quite uh, means uh, acceptable comment I think. But yes, but the yes. but, but 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 the I I I really like the comment which uh, Juan Ferrando uh, uh, given to Pulista that uh, he is still finding uh, he is still searching for that key for key of happiness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. You know, I, 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 think, I think over here, SC is Bengal, if I can bring it back to them, were searching for the key to their defense. They seem to have found it, but I'll tell you when they didn't find it. It was during that game against Odisha FC. That 10-goal thriller between Odisha FC and SC is Bengal. My God, these two teams, whenever they play... So, last season, the scoreline was 6-5. This season, 6-4. What is it about these two sides always producing such high-scoring games, Varun? Uh, well, it's really strange, you know, uh, while the uh, like goals were counting up and we you know we yeah. were discussing in the com box, we don't want another 6-5, but it actually almost went there. So, two of the most high-scoring games of the Euro Indian Super League. And I think yeah. uh, East Bengal came back in the game, like they scored four goals, all because, uh, you know, Kiko Ramirez picked up three of his, uh, like the nucleus of the team. 
He picked up yeah. with Javi Hernandez. He picked up two more players, and he changed the team. He was, I think, too overconfident, and that's the reason. Like uh, he's been able to score four goals, but he has that match. Uh, the red and gold brigade, yeah. the defense, like totally crippled. You know, like uh, it was horrible defending. You know, they left the balls, and uh, I think they could have scored more goals. They could have gone and for something. But I hope yeah. uh, SE is Bengal. You know, bounces back. Let's actually have the goal scored during that game come up on the screen right now. And Chetan, I want you to run us through each goal over here. Imagine you are in the commentary box and you are running us through these goals. <laughs> <laughs> so that was this was great. Uh, that 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 thing, uh, the brilliant, brilliant uh, free kick by Javi Hernandez again. So two uh, one one it's uh, the so second goal from Odisha. Two one Odisha took the lead, but that uh, uh, centre back a uh, great one. <laughs> And this Olympic goal, the first ever <laughs> Olympic goal of the season from the man Javi Hernandez, Olympic one, the third ever Olympic goal in Hero ISL. In fact, so it's four one Odisha again. Goals galore in Tilak Maidan. It's not stopping yet. It's four two East Bengal. And now Odisha again. Oh, what a shot! What a shot to the second post. It's five two Odisha. And it's Chuku Daniel Chimba Chuku. Oh, two for him! Another penalty! Oh, it's five four now in favor of Odisha. One more! Oh, Cabrera Reda! It's six four. You believe? It's six four. <laughs> well done. That deserves a round of applause, Chetan. We That's promise it. you, we will slow the goals down for you the next time I put you on the spot like that. So, हम भी और थोड़ा इसका मजा ले सकते हैं और रस ले सकते हैं आपकी कमेंट्री का. But going from that crazy game, we had another crazy game. Mumbai City FC versus ATK Mohan Bagan. Now ATK Mohan Bagan earlier in the week three nil win during the derby, comprehensive. But then get done by Mumbai City FC like that. What's 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 that all about? Uh, I think there was a plan. There was a plan. Uh, I am not a master of, of tactics, but uh, playing three at the back uh, when 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 they saw that and they were probably sure. I think Des Buckingham was sure he'd go three at the back and he's overloaded the wings and put in. Ball after ball after ball inside the box, and if you get your deliveries right, uh, you will score. Uh, on that day, Mumbai City with their crossing were fantastic with their free kicks. Look at these set pieces; absolutely brilliant delivery. Of course, there might be an argument shade offside here and there, handball for Vikram Pratap's second goal. But if you if you honestly ask, and this is going to happen tomorrow, and I hope it's I'm kind of scared, but it's going to happen tomorrow when I'm speaking to uh, Senor Habas, and I'm going to ask him. Whether those two goals, if they were disallowed, would have changed the result? Because it, whether he admits that, that they were outplayed on 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 that evening, they were completely outplayed and taken by surprise. When a champion team like that is taken by surprise, I think they just let their heads down a little bit, which is very uncharacteristic of a Haba side. But it happened, and I, I now think: Do is this result going to mean that they come back stronger than ever? Because that might very well be the case. Yeah, and especially when you have someone like Antonio Lopez Habas at the helm. Yeah. Now everyone knows what he's all about. Everyone... Pray for me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in my prayers tonight, plus you will be. Yes, Varun. Uh, but I have a point actually. Uh, Chetan, first me first. Yeah. Okay. So in Kolkata Maidan, you know, there's a uh, saying. You know, after the derby, whoever wins the derby, you know, they have a huge like a big loss in the next match. So uh, I think that's what happened maybe to ATK Mohan Bagan. Uh, and uh, I'm going to drop missed... that in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a famous saying. So I think that. So what happened? But I never expected, you know, Mumbai to have such a huge win by one. I think they missed Thiri in the defense, maybe. I think so. Yeah, nobody expected that result, which is the biggest right. part of that game. Everybody had ATK Mohan Bagan like you know as favorites. Hmm. Excellent statement of intention from the champions, though. Yes, Chetan, you had something to add over there, which he will in due course of time whenever he does join back. Uh, right now, yeah, he's uh, just gonna. Yes, go ahead, Chetan. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the, the, my my point was, see, look at the look at the both look at both the teams. Uh, uh, we were talking about uh, Mumbai versus ATK Mohan Bagan. I think uh, uh, in that match, our uh, captain, na ATK Mohan Bagan ka uh, that centre back, Indian centre back. Pritham Kotal. Yeah, but Pritham Pritham Kotal. Pritham yeah. Kotal was playing his hundredth match, hundred plus matches, right. I think, hundred plus ISL plus. matches. And look at Vikram Pradeep Singh. He was. He was actually given first ever starting start. Yeah. Right. So that was a clear move from Des Des Beckingham. Yeah. Because if if uh, ATK Mohan Bagan is going to play with three centre back uh, uh, strategy again to Mumbai, they will obviously get more space on the right 
also le left back position means left back liston will always move up so there will be lot of spaces lot of space yeah. in the right so if vikram pradap can utilize that space mumbai had a clear chance so des beckingham ka move yeah. tha and that is paid off including vkp singh at the, the starting line yeah. yeah i'm glad you brought up vikram pratap uh, uh, shaiju chatan because you know he's been given the faith by his manager and that's so important for young players isn't it pulas absolutely um and it's not the first time that he's spoken about uh, playing vikram pratap he is uh, he's fond yeah. of the player he also and bipin as well had a great yeah, game yeah yeah bipin obviously we we know what he can do from last season i'm glad he's hit the you know he started so well uh, but even with vikram pratap um there has been word that he really likes him and then after the game, in in the post match he said put his arm around him and said yeah if you continue to do that you will keep starting games and that is so important to have the trust uh, of of your head coach lovely you know speaking about mumbai city fc's actual hero indian super league team i also just want to briefly bring up now while the action on the pitch continues mumbai city fc had a bit of a comeback in the eisl as well now like we said last week the eisl is a parallel fifa 22 league that's happening while the hero isl is on and guys just sample this kerala blasters leading 1-0 against mumbai city fc what happens after that take a look turning around in circles and of course uh, it's really important for uh, oh. ashwin to get this goal it doesn't look like he's going to get it now he's going to clear the ball away and that i think unless he can get a shot away literally now which could be oh, oh he has the shot taken and oh. it's saved it's saved by michael and again i think it's just because he delayed the shot a little too much and now kafu charging into the box can he get the cut back he's the referee is in no mood to blow the whistle <laughs> it's 3 minutes of extra time still going oh! he has the opening What? and it's saved by michael again is it going to be another corner yes the referee is just letting this go on and on and oh my goodness he puts it in it's got root call it oh. and save oh and it's a goal and ashwin somehow oh my god aksha just throwing those headphones off in disgust he cannot believe it just look at that it's stunned silence over there and oh my goodness what what a climax absolute scenes happening in the EISL and that's the table there in front of you Chennai FC leading the hero ISL table as well as the EISL table so happy days in the Chennai in FC camp wow listen if someone scored a last minute equalizer like that against me i would probably be throwing my controller guys yeah, yeah that's and... that's why i gave up the game <laughs> age, age i think age makes you mature as you, uh, I, i mean i i may find out as as the years roll by again and buy new tech again. again and again <laughs> but even in eisl we are facing the same problem constantly <laughs> <laughs> i know <that. laughs> good one classic i was about to i was about to go there but i'm glad he went there first <laughs> <laughs> well guys it's been an absolute riot as it usually is uh your final thoughts what are you looking forward to from the upcoming fixtures of the week the most um if i may go first i think uh, yeah. bengaluru against mumbai city uh, is going to be a big test for mumbai city if they can keep up the momentum uh i'm also searching for uh, well uh, well goa because they need to get some wins uh if they can uh, you know start getting some points it's it doesn't look great when you see the bottom of the table. So the two Goa games and Mumbai Bengaluru, I think for me is going to be a big one. Yeah, because Bengaluru then can can really move up. See, that's how the the Hero ISL because of the relentless nature and how the table is structured. A couple of wins doesn't really set you back by a lot because all uh, yeah. all a couple of losses, beg your pardon, doesn't really set you back by a lot. A couple of wins later, you can be in contention again, right at the top of the table in the top four. In fact, a lot of the teams are really still in the mix up until the halfway point of the season because after that. is is when teams really start breaking away from each other so uh, one thing i can assure you of is that we will not be breaking away from each other throughout the course of the season because <laughs> oh, you know so I, i just i just i just had to i just had to every saturday <laughs> at 2 pm just a nice revision of what we do here at the let's football live show uh, again it's been an absolute riot uh, before we kind of go into the final av of the show shaju chetan and varun your thoughts on the upcoming week yeah. chetan why don't you go first yeah. 
uh, uh, see uh, next week i think uh, today uh, excluding today uh, i i'll take it from uh, tomorrow sunday onwards so tomorrow kerala playing against blasters playing against odisha uh, for me it's a great, it's a it's a big match for us because odisha uh, same odisha unbeaten two matches convincing wins so if kerala blasters can can provide a surprise i i use the word surprise against odisha that will be a good result like in the eisl which we saw right now kerala can come up to fifth spot in the point table if they can win against odisha and again hyderabad playing against uh, bengaluru uh, on thursday i think and atk mohan bagan uh, after facing that thrashing defeat uh, in the from mumbai last week they are playing two matches this week very crucial week for atk mohan bagan they play first match they are playing against jamshedpur jamshedpur we already saw greg stewart right now so tough nut to crack so crucial week for atk mohan bagan they are going to play two matches you agree varun yeah agree agree like especially the jamshedpur match so in coil has already started with his magic so that's that match is going to be very important and also you know sc is going to match against the goal so so fc goa has you know be struggling in the start so i think they might get that first win in this match sc is going to you know against fc goa well like always lots to look forward to in the hero isl in the coming week but guys as we wrap up i again we highlighted jamshedpur fc earlier on in the show i also wanted to highlight odisha fc because they've given their fans a lot of happiness and a lot of joy finished rock bottom last season no one's talking about them in rock bottom terms anymore and just to sample what their fans are really going through right now and what their emotions are really like we have young somya ranjan babu who has a message for the team as well as a small clip of what the fans were like after Javi Hernandez scored that olympic gold during a screening of course a small caveat we encourage everyone to stay safe wear masks and get vaccinated uh, as i'm sure everyone on this panel already is so looking forward to more let's football live action the next week guys it's been an absolute pleasure see you next week thank you and see you first two matches of odi fc has been amazing for us juggernauts as we have seen a lot of goals and we've also seen magical masterclass by Javi Hernandez and also by Adidas Suarez Cabrera we have seen great leadership qualities of Vinit Rai we have seen great defensive handling of Hector Rodas and congratulations Isaac Ralte for scoring your first Indian Super League goal and thanks a lot Kiko sir for building this team by young indian players and also using experienced foreign players let's go team vamos